Got that mirror finish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. It is January 22nd, uh, the new year, 2024, and it's been a little while since we last uploaded a video. I think the last one was probably, I don't know, harvest sometime, but honestly, since then, we haven't been really doing a whole lot. We, as soon as we got done with harvest and tillage, we had our annual hunting trip in the middle of November, and then just after that, holidays and stuff, and so we're finally just getting back into the swing of things. And really the only thing besides the sprayer that we've had in is our 550, but the only thing we did to it was wax it. So we didn't want to bore you with that, but uh, we've got a couple other things going on with the sprayer. As you see, we got the panels up done, just a couple air filters, but every year we have this thing checked out by a mechanic and there's finally a couple things like right here this hose is leaking behind the crimp right in there so we got to get a new hose put on there unfortunately our local Berkeys can't make them with those types of fittings for some reason and then up there you won't be able to see but right in there that bung i think it's what it's called is leaking slightly so he thought it might just be the o-ring so we might try to tighten it first before we have to uh drain it because there's like 29 or 30 gallons of oil in there we'd have to drain so we're going to do that and then we're going to change the engine oil obviously that's just pretty standard right there i'll try to rig this up so it doesn't splatter but uh it's kind of what we got going on right now hopefully we get some more videos put out get some more stuff in here i know we uh might have to do a little bit of work to the bean planter and then we're actually getting a new corn planter. So that'll be fun to set up. Then we'll run a couple of other tractors through. So we'll get uh, started on working on the sprayer. Good grief. Okay, we uh, just got done draining the oil as you saw, and then I already put the oil filter on the other side of the motor here, and then I just got done putting this fuel filter on, and then we'll go underneath the front, underneath the fuel tank, and put the fuel water separator fuel on um, filter on up there and kind of show you how it goes. Basically the same principle for over here. And then earlier, I put in a new engine air filter in there. We also got a new cab air filter, and for these sprayers, they use uh, charcoal to help filter out the chemical, and that's sitting in the box in there. It goes up underneath the cab here, but we won't put it on until we get ready to spray because it gets activated by oxygen, so we don't want to take it out of its uh, sealed bag. But here's this other fuel uh, filter. This filter has got a sensor on it for fuel pressure. So you gotta take the wiring harness off. Being a bit stubborn, let's see here. Go this little metal clip, set it up here, pull down. Yeah, wait. Suck on that, Rocky. Okay. 
That's going into a drain pan. You just can't see it. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Tip one, number one. <laughs> Don't forget to shut off the fuel. <laughs> Well, I got cleaned up the best I could. Normally, we wear latex gloves to do stuff like this, but we're fresh out. But it probably also would not have helped me in that situation. Oh well. Take the cap off the bottom of this filter. Like so. Make sure you get the little O-ring on there. Make sure the O-ring goes back on. Grab said wiring harness adapter. Take the old O ring off. I'm just gonna wash my hands again. Insert fuel pressure probe. Tight, not too tight. Back up through here. Get a little oil or fuel on the O ring. Get hand tight. Grab our clip we set up here. Stick this back in there. And. Okay, got the clip on. Turn the fuel back on. And then. Do. Have to pump it, unfortunately. We're uh, priming the fuel filter. That way we don't get air in the system and lock it up. Well, everybody, uh, it's a new day. We had to wait on some parts I was talking about. They're over there now. They finally came in. The hose, the hydraulic hose that we're gonna fix and then the seal for the hydraulic oil reservoir. That took a couple days. And then when we were gone, we actually, while we were waiting on that, I guess, we went on a uh, family ski trip out in Utah, so that was really fun. But uh, we're back now, we're gonna get back to things, and I'm actually the only thing, the only person in here right now. Got this sprayer tucked back in the corner of the shop here. But uh, I'm only one here right now, so instead of tackling that hose and hydraulic reservoir, I'm gonna work on this. There's a bushing in here that the uh, mechanic who came and did the inspection said needs to be replaced. And I've actually taken these out before and I guess I replaced the bushing. Can't, I was doing some, I was revitalizing a, a uh, grease circ, I think, and cleaning out some gunk and stuff when we first got this. So that should be fairly easy to do on my own. So I'm going to get going on that and then maybe once dad or Luke or Matthew shows up here in a little bit, we'll get going on that uh, hose and hydraulic reservoir. Let's see how long this camera, if this light lasts. Showed up this morning, it was on like uh, 30%. Plugged in for a little bit. Got another camera charging right now, but it didn't have a light on it. We'll, we'll see.
come out nicer than I thought it would. Decide how ambitious I want to get. If I want to try a hammer or just an or a hammered punch or just an air hammer. Yeah, you can have it. I don't need it. Try a hammered punch first with a little finesse. If I had to guess, you probably can't see it right with my gloves on, but this is the piece that's watered out, which is kind of strange because we're pretty adamant about keeping things greased. As you can see there's the, I don't know what you want to call it, pivots in there. That's that cylinder, a bit more flexibility. There's a crack, but that's probably just from just now. So I'll get those other, the new pieces and try to get it put back in. Let's see. Here's a better look at the new clean one. You can see, well, let's see here. Grease search right there. Grease it with the grease gun, gun. Shoots in through there. And it comes into these grooves right here into the hole. And there's a groove in there kind of how that works and uh, <laughs> this little thing right here $60 that kind of goes to show how out of control things are right now when it comes to prices on parts so get this thing back in there well that's proven to be a little difficult so what I did I uh, threw that bushing in the freezer that way maybe it would You'd be surprised. You can do stuff to bushings like that. And, ooh, the lighting's not very good. And you put it in the freezer, it'll cool down just enough to where it'll go in just that much easier. And then when it cools down, I'll uh, put some grease or oil on it too. And uh, see if it'll slide in a little better. But uh, while we're waiting on that, I'm gonna take this, or see what it's gonna take to move this bin motor to that one over there. Looks like a half inch or 916, and we're not going to need these rail guides. We'll just need the flat plate of the motor. Take it over here and just slap it right on there. Uh, this corn in this bin right here has actually been in there over a year now. Whatever October to see. I beg it. Uh, November, December, 
January, February. So what is that? 16 months. It's been there 16 months since fall of 22. So, and dad went in there the other day. He said it's getting kind of gummy on top. So we're going to probably have to haul that in in the next week or so. So I'm going to switch motors on that and then go from there. to switch cameras and this camera and the mic combination that I have on right now sometimes don't really like each other so hopefully it's working all right So what you saw me doing earlier, there's a bunch of little different holes on the bottom side of this plate. That way you can get your belt lined up with your, or your pulleys lined up with the belt. It's not perfect, but close enough. And what we might have to end up doing, since we want to get this corn, uh, at least not, not necessarily the whole bin, but at least some of it moved in a timely manner, what we might have to do is, because it's kind of soft right now, and we don't want to take the semi trucks down the lane and risk uh, tearing it up so we might actually just put some in our one of the grain carts and then that'll be a, a truck load whenever we feel like it's dry enough to get down the lane and stuff so we might end up doing that put it in one of the grain carts and just let it sit for a while let it harden up some more but uh that'll probably be for another video
Okay, so we're gonna drain the hydraulic oil out of this so we can uh, fix the O-ring up there. And fortunately, the only way to do this is with by bucket. And apparently there's like 29 or 30 gallons in this thing. And it actually doesn't use regular tractor hydraulic oil. I think we're supposed to use uh, excavator oil. So we'll have to go get some of that and then a new filter. But uh, we'll get this oil drained and then we'll replace this hose right here because it's got a little bit of a leak right there. Well, it should be out there, shouldn't it? Yeah, I'm sure that's silly something, though. That hose should stay sticking straight up, hopefully. Pretty much. Might have a little bit more drip out. That filter? Yeah, it's got a filter in there. Well, I'll change that. Well, we got that all buttoned up. You guys saw that get put back together and then took that off and I didn't have the camera going. Putting it back together, dad is up there. <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't like uh, being on camera so I didn't turn the camera on, but. It was pretty self-explanatory. Then all we got to do, I'll, I won't show it because it might be another day or two, I'll try to get this video out. But all we have to do now is fill this thing back up with hydraulic oil. It's kind of boring. Back here, at the back of the rig. Uh, there's the, can you see it? There's the fill right there. And then there's a filter in here that will replace, but that's pretty, so pretty easy, you just undo these, pull it off, and then drop the other filter back in. So that's all we gotta do to this sprayer, I think, and it should be ready to go for spring. I am looking forward to another 60 days probably, and we'll be getting pretty close. Uh, these sprayers, uh, that, there because even when you're standing still these sprayers hydraulic systems will circulate so we'll put that in the armrest the key in the armrest and make sure that no one starts it because that could be uh, catastrophic also look who decided to show up for work <laughs> he's been get demonetized for this oh no blurred out he's been doing road commissioner duties and uh I'll be here all day tomorrow. Tearing up road, I guess. But uh, I'll have to fill you in. I had a call from the sheriff's office yesterday. <laughs> Do what? He does, this is a stage. He doesn't know that. I'll have to. I'll have to shut the camera off to tell you though, or I'll, I'll have to kill these guys. <laughs> well, that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. I uh, appreciate you watching. And with that, oh man, the lighting's awful. With that uh, little bit about the sheriff's office call me, don't don't worry, I didn't do anything wrong. I was just uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm trying to say how I think I should word it. Uh, my number was given to them to answer some questions about something that happened in town, but nothing serious. Okay, but yep. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the video. I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, maybe we'll. Uh, be hauling some corn here a couple days although it's not going to be a whole lot because that's like a 6,000 bushel bin is all so but I'm sure if we do some filming then that uh, we'll, we'll be doing other stuff as well so 
stay tuned for the next one and uh, I'll see you then.